What's up? This is Katie from San Diego, California. You're listening to the Dogs Podcast. Here we go, brownies. Here we go. Woof, woof. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Zach Kopp, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Dogs. Uh, before we get into this episode, we want to give a big shout out to Dover alum Hunter Armstrong. For any of you guys watching the Olympics, Hunter's been competing in the Olympics in Tokyo. Uh, he swam at Dover, he swam at Ohio State, now he's swimming for the USA. Um, he missed out on you know the, the medal round on his individual event by .01 or .001 seconds or something crazy. Um, he was given the opportunity to swim for the, the men's relay te- team in the uh, preliminary rounds. He helped them get to the finals. He didn't swim with them in the finals, but that team then set a world record last night, won the gold, so Hunter gets a gold medal. Nice. It's kind of crazy. I mean, I went to Dover. Josh went to Dover. Zach, when he went to Dover when he was a real little kid, mm-hmm. Justin's been drunk in Dover a bunch of times. <laughs> so, you know, we do this That's show right. We do this show in Dover. I actually coached Hunter's older brother in football in junior high. So, I mean, it's pretty cool to see a local kid get a, a gold medal. That's kind of nuts. So, we want to give a big shout out to Hunter and to just Team USA in general because I like the Olympics. Yep. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty I mean, awesome. it's crazy. Somebody, you know, this close... You know, I think it came out, uh, somebody said, you know, to be an Olympic athlete, you're like one in like 750,000 people. And there's one from right here where, you know, we're located. So it's not, I mean, just getting to the Olympics is like super, super hard. And he, he's got a medal. And I think the kid's got a shot. He's, he's only young, 20. Yeah, young. He's got, you know, if he, if he keeps doing it, he's got maybe two more games, three more games left in him. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Maybe he'll get an individual one, but again, congrats, Hunter. We're all super pumped for you here in Dover. Um, we got a couple new fan intros this week. Uh, Katie, that was awesome. Katie's a member of the Patreon, so big shout out to her. Uh, we're really excited that we got, uh, I think, two or three this week. But as always, we're looking for more. To get your intro on the show, head to the dogspodcast.com and tap leave voicemail in the drop down menu. Uh, be as creative as you'd like. Remember to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Please subscribe on YouTube. Tap the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. You can also find us on Apple, Spotify, Google. Um, also, we're on TikTok. We post, uh, posted some training camp videos. Uh, some of us were up at training camp, so those are pretty cool. Uh, lastly, remember to head to jointhedogs.com to become an official dog pack member on our Patreon page. On the Patreon page, you get access to extra episodes, um, early episodes. We put articles up there and pretty much unlimited access to us. If you comment on there, one of us answers pretty much right away. Um, pretty much 24 seven. Justin works midnight. So he's up all night. <laughs> I'm free most of the day. Zach doesn't ever answer our text. So if you can get him to answer our Patreon, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're you. doing pretty well. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it, it's pretty awesome. It's a pretty inclusive Browns community. And um, we're just posting stuff on there all the time. Uh, and we're going to beef it up too. I think once the game start, I'm going to be on there kind of like live, not tweeting, but essentially live tweeting my thoughts about the game. So we'll all be like watching the game together. Um, so it's just been a lot of fun. We're also going to do a Patreon members fantasy football league with the winner getting some free dogs merch. So if that's something you're interested in, if you're big into fantasy football like we are, head to jointhedogs.com, join the Patreon, and we'll get the uh, we'll get the fantasy league going here shortly. You can enjoy all the extra content until then. Yeah, I was going to say the fantasy league is we're going to need to get the uh, get that rolling as of my tongue twists all around my mouth. Uh, get that going here in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, so if pretty you're exciting, man. That, yeah, I mean Hall of Fame games this week. It's nuts. I mean, we, it's we, crazy. We, we had training camp. I, yeah. Yep. There's actual real football news to talk about this week. Yeah. Like, Not and, just like our speculation yeah, stuff. And, and we actually went and watched the guys on the field. We've been talking about this for months about, you know, all the speculation is great, but I'd love to actually go see these guys on the field. And we finally got to do that. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, before we do get into training camp, though, huge news out of Cleveland last night. We signed our boy. Nick Chubb, to the chagrin of Josh, because no. he doesn't believe in paying running backs a second time. Uh, Nick <laughs> Chubb signed to a three-year, was it $36.2 million with $20 million guaranteed. In my opinion, that's a kind of a team-friendly deal. Very team-friendly. Very, very team-friendly. Well, and I, I have some notes, because as soon as this happened last time, and you even said something, you're like, <laughs> hey, you're going to cry tomorrow about this contract. I said, I don't think so. Let me pull up some stuff, kind of compare to some of these other running backs that you know, it didn't work out so well for them and their teams, but 
I don't know, man. After I looked at all this, Nick Chubb's contract with the Browns, I think this is just another another great move by Andrew Barry in this front office. Yeah. So I mean, the I think the key thing here was three years. At yes. the end of this deal, Nick Chubb is probably still gonna be in his prime, maybe the last part of his prime, but still in his prime. But we didn't commit to him for like that five, six year deal like you're seeing with some of these other guys. And then, you know, after they have one or two good seasons on that contract, then nothing, you know, Todd Gurley. Exactly. You know what I mean? So we're, we're, we signed him to his prime. We still have him. I mean, we have him for the next three years, Hunt for the next two years. So we got the best backfield in the league for guaranteed the next two years at least. Yeah, I think yeah. until he's 29. I was talking to somebody on social media last night and uh, they're like, what a steal. You know, uh, with the meat, you know, the salary cap's going to go up probably next year. And I was like, what a steal right now. I'm like, if it's, if this guy gets Derek, like Henry touches, he's the best back. I, me personally, and I, you know, you can make the argument, all oh, you're a Cleveland homer, blah, 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 whatever. I don't care what you think. <laughs> um, but I do think Nick Chubb is arguably the best back in the league. I'll say he's the best back. Yeah. I, so um, for me, I'm like, I don't even think that it's. It's a steal now. Right now it is. Yeah, I got it. I got the contracts pulled up of uh, the other running backs um, on spot uh, spot track spot track I think or whatever dot com. Um, he's it's eighth. He's the eighth highest. Um, he's behind guys like Zeke. Talking about somebody who got that long extension. He got he's uh, he still got six years left on that contract, and they're not even knowing if he's going to be really be the bell cow. I've been hearing Tony back. Pollard going to get more touches. Yeah, so you know you got Zeke, uh, Kamara, obviously uh, CMC um, down there with the Panthers, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon, uh, Aaron Jones, and then Nick Chubb. So Nick, even after this extension, Nick Chubb's still in the eighth highest paid running back. That is correct. So that tells me, I mean, one, that tells me he wants to be in Cleveland. Of deals that they are currently on. That's, deals uh, you know, the deals that they made. Yeah. Okay. So guys like a Joe Mixon who signed a deal, I think it was just a year ago, um, maybe a year and a half ago, he got a, a four-year $48 million. So, you know, he got a little bit more. And but, it's just crazy to me. So we, we kind of had that, I don't, I don't want to say worry, but we didn't know, does Nick Chubb really have Cleveland ties? You know, or is he going to, you know, running backs – they don't have the longest career, so sometimes they just kind of got to go where who's going to give them the biggest contract to set themselves up for the rest of their lives. And for him to take a deal that only – he's the best running back in the league, and we're paying him like he's the eighth best running back in the league. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you just heard Devontae Adams come out and say he refuses to sign his next contract unless he's number one paid receiver. So, I mean, for Nick Chubb, like you said, great job by, by Andrew Barry. For sure. Yeah, for I, sure. Yeah, I, and this is just Nick Chubb kind of in a nutshell of, you know, yeah, what he, he, he is. He's a team guy. You know, he's, ne- he's never been about, you know, all the, you know, flash and glitz and glamour and once, the, you know, he's in all the commercials, you know, he's just not that type of guy. No. So he's <laughs> very team friendly, team oriented. He could be a guy that, you know, there's multiple personalities in the, in the NFL that wouldn't be okay with having Kareem Hunt as your number two taking carries from you. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I, I was going to say, like, with Nick Chubb, you say he's not in, like, all the commercials and stuff. I don't even know if I know what his voice sounds like. I mean, <laughs> if I heard true. a commercial Hard and knocks. I just heard it and it was Patrick Mahomes, I would know Patrick Mahomes' voice. Yeah. I've heard him talk. You know, some of these other guys, Zeke. I mean, but I've never heard, like, Nick yeah, Chubb could be talking and be like, who is that? <laughs> he, right? When I was watching uh, ESPN last year, and I think it was Ryan Clark said, you should be fearful of the running back who comes out, no wristbands. No, no visors. No he just, you know, he looks like the mannequin. Yeah. He just like, oh, this is what we're supposed to wear. And this is no flash. And then he just comes out and runs for 180 yards on you and three touchdowns. He just, he's like the, he's an old school kind of guy. Yes, he is. So I've got some contract comparisons, some situation stuff between some of these running backs in the past. If we want to talk about that. Go ahead. Sure. Cause this, whenever we were talking earlier in the year about, you know, we got to resign Nick Chubb, got to resign Nick Chubb. I, I wasn't against resigning him. It was as against giving him one of these humongous running back contracts that don't ever seem to work out in favor of the team. So the first one that comes to mind that I wanted to jump on right away was Todd Gurley in 2018, because we know that did not go well for the Rams. They signed him to a four year deal, 57.5 million, 21 million signing bonus. It came out to 14.4 million a year and they guaranteed him 45 overall. 
45 million. He was like 23, 24. So he was younger when he got that contract. Um, I think he was younger when he came in the league. Uh, that was 2018. He rushed for 1,250 yards and 17 touchdowns. He was a monster. Yeah. 2019, 857 and 12. That was the following year. Then 2020, two years after he signed that contract, he was cut. Yeah. Knees, <laughs> knees just gave out. Yeah. So I, and it's just one of those things where it's like you paid him all this money. It was a four year deal. You got two out of him and then he's gone. In, in the second one, I mean, the, the, how many touchdowns? 12. 12. Still good. Still, Still good. good yeah. but, but not, not 48 million good. No. No. And I mean, I'm, I'm just going off rushing. I'm not factoring in like the receiving stats and stuff, but I know that dip too. Yeah. For him. Did you have something on Gurley? No, no, not on Gurley. Just okay. like for the the contract, even if Cleveland would have came out and said, "Hey, we're paying Nick Chubb fourteen million a year," I'd have said, "Okay, yes, sure." <laughs> oh, that's what it's got to be. That's what it's got to be. Right. So then I went and looked at Le'Veon Bell because that was oh, another one tough. that he was kind of the one you know that really set like the you got to pay a running back kind of mindset market. I mean, he I set guess. out. A year. He right. took a year yeah. off football to get money. In his yes. prime. Yes, in his prime. So he he didn't get signed until 2019 after that year that he took off. They The Jets signed him to a four-year, $52.5 million contract, $8 million signing bonus, $13 million a year with $27 million guaranteed. He was 27 at the time. Uh, in that year, 2019, he only rushed for 789 yards and Three touchdowns. <laughs> and you can't have a uh, blame. Adam so for the, la- yeah. the last time he was on the field was two years prior, 2017, when he put up 1291 and nine. So his production dipped big time. They gave him that big contract. He was cut the following year, 2020. So you, that, <laughs> these are the things that scared me about paying a, a running back big money. I will say this, though. In those situations, there were huge red flags on those running backs. Everybody knew Todd Gurley's knees were trash. Yeah. And the Jets signed a running back older after a year of not playing football, and they sucked. What did they really think they were going to get out of him? You know? So yeah. there were some major red flags. Yeah. All we're doing is keeping a piece on an a puzzle that is already very much complete right now here's one other contract and it also had major red flags before this guy was signed because he missed i think he only played one game either the year or the year before he got this big contract so he was injured um it was david johnson in 2018 oh. got a three now this is similar to chubb though he got a three-year 39 million dollar contract 12 million signing 13 million a year 32 million guaranteed he was 26 that year in 2018, he rushed for 940 yards and seven touchdowns. The next year in 2019, it was only 345 and two. So when he was 2020, off, he was uh, traded. Coming off the wrist injury? When he, Something like that. Yeah, I think his so. Wrist first game. What, now, what I'm seeing too is normally as the years go on, you're, the contracts always get higher. All those contracts were higher than Chubbs, and there were two, three years ago. So the fact that we locked him up for this little amount, I don't know how Andrew Barry did it. What did he tell this guy? Yeah. I was just going to say real quick, the other the other deciding factor for me that said this is a good deal, Chubb's 25. He's 25 years old. Three-year deal. Mm. If you, do we see him not being effective for the next three years? Right. Well, honestly, wow. if you go if you just go by the 30 rule, we could sign him to like a two-year extension after this. Yep. Could. And he's still, I mean, he's, who knows? And that's what was part of the deal was they wanted to get him to this kind of shorter term contract. So that way he could have the option to get another semi big contract after this, rather than signing him till he's 30. And then he's kind of stuck. And yeah. all those guys are taking a full workload. This guy's splitting carries with Kareem Hunt. Exactly. Uh, longer, longer shelf life. Not that I don't think Nick Chubb could literally like do the Derrick Henry thing. I could do, he could do it all day, but but I why? Think if yeah. You don't have why to. you don't have exactly. to? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm I got the cap. You know, numbers pulled up here for uh, different NFL teams. Brown's still sitting in sixth. Even even after we're down to eighteen uh, three nine five in available cap space. Um, if you but if you go that you can kind of break this down. Active cap though, uh, which is allocated for all the players that we currently have signed on the team. Uh, Browns are second. They're number two. Only Dallas has more people signed on. Uh, cap wise, the biggest thing with the Browns that they've been successful on is the dead cap. You know, players that you've had to release, you know, that you were just trying to, you were getting rid of them, but you're still taking on their salary. Uh, Browns are towards the bottom in that. So 
it's kind of been, it's kind of crazy to think. I, I know just kind of talked about that, you know, Haslam's obviously willing to spend some money, you know, Brown, we haven't had this in forever, you know, where we're actually going to be up towards the top. There's a chance, you know, after we sign Baker, after we sign Denzel, that we're going to be the New York Yankees of the NFL when it comes <laughs> to, you know, cap room and cap space. Um, and you got a team like the Indians in Cleveland that are selling everybody because they don't want to make any money or make fans happy. Hey, the Guardians. <laughs> yeah, the oh, Guardians. The Guardians. Yeah. Come right. on. Hey, they're guarding hey, their hey. wallet. That's right. Yeah. The Golans <laughs> are. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah, right about that. Doing. So, you know, it's it's very interesting to see how Andrew Barry's going to work in a Baker and a Denzel and why tell her. Why tell her how, how he's going to, you know, finagle the money a little bit to, hey, we'll give you so much guaranteed here you know, and stuff like that. So. So a couple of things with Chubb too. Um, just saw these pop up on Twitter since 2018. Uh, the league leader over that time span of most missed tackles is Derrick Henry. Number two on the list is Nick Chubb. Yep. With 168 missed tackles since 2018. It's got the highest uh, since 2018. It's got the highest uh, yards per carry too. I think over uh, Gus Edwards and Derrick Henry. They said the only person in Cleveland Browns franchise history to produce more scrimmage yards in his first three seasons than Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb has 4,134, 4,134 yards, and Jim Brown barely got him with 4,181. In Nick Chubb, we couldn't get him on the field his rookie year because Hugh Jackson didn't, didn't like wanna, him or something. Didn't want to play, yeah. yep. play him. He didn't want to play any of those guys. Carlos Baker. High. Yeah, yeah, Blake's guy, Hugh. Yeah. Over yeah. right here. <laughs> this is when was Hugh my guy. So, so this is this is what's pretty cool. So they got a comparison for the first three seasons between uh, Jim Brown and Nick Chubb. Jim Brown rushed 749 times. Nick Chubb 680 yards per carry. Jim Brown 5.1. Nick Chubb 5.2 uh, rushing yards. Jim Brown oh 3,790. Oh, I'm sorry, scrimmage yards 4,181. Nick Chubb 4,134. Wow. Number one and number two in franchise history. And he's just, what, sixth or eighth highest paid? What did you say? Eighth. I think, yeah, I think he's eighth in the total contract. And I, like I think it. he's like sixth in average per year. Right. right. And Jim Brown isn't just an all time great Cleveland Brown. He's, he's an all time great. Uh, yeah. Arguably the arguably best the running Greece. black ever. Yeah. yeah. Flat out. Just. Yep. So, I mean, and we're, and Nick Chubb's right up there with all his stats. And we couldn't get him on the field his rookie year. He, he had, what, three rushes for 120-some yards and two touchdowns against the Raiders. And John Dorsey was like, all right, we're just going to trade huge. Uh, we're just going to trade Carlos Hyde yep. if you won't. Yeah. If you won't play him, <laughs> it was kind of like uh, the movie Moneyball when the I mean, coach wouldn't play the players that he wanted, so he just traded all of them. Was like, well, now you got to play him. <laughs> John Dorsey just did the same thing. He pulled a Brad Pitt. And Nick Chubb missed four games last year. Yeah, and he's not rushing twenty twenty five times a game. Yeah. So for him to be able to put up these scrimmage yards just shows when he's on the field, he's efficient, he's effective, he's just dominant. He's awesome. Uh, He's the heart of uh, the Cleveland Browns. So, see, this is the conversation I wanted to have about the Nick Chubb contract when he got signed because I knew they were going to, but I just didn't want to see them come out and say, oh, we, we're going to do a six-year, $100 million contract. I was like, what are you doing? It, well, one thing I like, too, is he, got, he signed that extension last night. And on Twitter, all the Browns players mm-hmm. are tweeting out about yep. how yeah, pumped I they are that. for Nick Chubb. Thank so that you. just goes to show how much he's loved in the locker room. He might not say a lot. We don't hear from him that much. But those guys in the locker room, they love him. And he didn't really, wasn't flashy about it either. He just sent, you know, sent out the picture with the new jersey and just said, let's go Cleveland with the bat symbol. <laughs> which very Nick Chubbish. Yes. Uh, but... Well, hopefully you guys are all as pumped about uh, Nick Chubb signing the extension as we are. I'm glad that Josh is on board. I would hate to have to <laughs> gang beat him here today. No, Andrew <laughs> Barry did a, a solid job here. I mean, all everything, everybody he signed this year, home runs. Yeah. Home runs. He's done a great job. The dude's a genius. I mean, the, we talk about the Haslam's. Talk. I mean, they 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 sucked kind of for a while. I talked really bad about. You know what I mean? They kind of. It took them a lot of tries, but credit to them to not. They didn't just like give up. Or you see some people were like, "No, we know what we're doing. We're just sticking." They weren't afraid to admit, like, "No, we done messed up." And then (laughs) they went out and they righted it. And man, yeah, for sure. Between Andrew Barring and Stefanski, it's the future super bright for Cleveland. Now I did some numbers though this morning. 
<clears throat> that I wanted to talk real quick with you guys about um, as far as salary cap and kind of the players we have left to sign and, and moving, thinking ahead to next year. Um, unless I did my math wrong, and if I did, please, anyone out there, I know you won't hesitate to tell me. Um, but our offensive starters, so I'm, I'm talking like OBJ, Jarvis, uh, Hooper, and Joku included, the two running backs, Chubb and Hunt, and then our offensive line. I'm not even factoring Baker's contract right now or anything. Just those offensive starters make up 65.5% of the cap right now. So that kind of worries me a little bit going into next year because if we're going to re-sign Teller, that's another, he's one of the small contracts out of that 65.5%. And Baker's not even included in that. So it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for defense. And it just, that's but where I'm like, the, I don't know. Other about than the defense, almost all those guys are locked up except for Ward. Miles is already But a lot signed. of them are on one-year deals. We'll just, I mean, the main guys we're, are hey, We're living to die on a one-year no, right I, now. You know what I mean? I get the that. Here. You sign Ward, Newsom's on a rookie deal, JOK rookie deal, Delpit rookie deal, Greedy's either going to be rookie deal or you're going to get him super cheap. Mm-hmm. Uh I mean, that, that's your main guys. Every defense, you can't have a pro bowler at every position. No, I get that. And one of the big factors on this too is OBJ and Jarvis are making up about 20% of the cap. Just those two guys. Yep. So just, just looking ahead to next year, you know, after we re-sign Nick Chubb now, um, you know, OBJ's, he's 10% himself. Nick Chubb is now 7.7% of the cap. We'll be all right. Oh, I know we'll be all right. I just wanted to throw some numbers out. So kind of, you know, we were, you know, kind of yeah, aware of where we stood. You know, definitely see, you know, with your numbers, how heavily we've looked at the offensive, you know, side of the ball when it comes to spending money compared to the defense. And it's kind of this year was kind of a shift in that way of, okay, we're finally spending a little bit of money. But it, like Josh said, it is a lot of one-year deals. Um with some of those players. So it'd be interesting to see because I mean, it's going to have to work out that some, somebody's going to have to go yeah. when, you know, it's yep. that you can't keep everybody. Yeah. Um, I know Tampa Bay, a lot of people be like, Oh, well they just, they, but they signed a lot of guys to one year deals too. Mm-hmm. So now, unless you do that exact same thing and maybe that's the new, going to be the new trend in the NFL, that could be what's, you know, where things are going to go. Guys want to try to run it back and they'll take a little bit less because they just got that Super Bowl bonus for playing with Tom Brady. So it'll be interesting. So my thing, if you're looking at the defense, Miles is already locked up. Mm-hmm. So um, how many years did we sign Walker to? One. Okay. So let's say we lock up Denzel. Delpit's on a rookie deal, so he's locked up. Newsom's on a rookie deal, so he's locked up. We got Greedy. John Johnson's on a three-year deal. That's over half our defense is locked mm-hmm. up. So if the other half of the defense has to be on one-year deals, that's just kind of like the way it goes, in my opinion. No, and I get it, and – the, the, I guess my when I look ahead, I kind of can see this playing out to where OBJ is not a part of this team next year, and if Jarvis is, he, it could be a contract restructure. I think type one, of the, of one of those guys are gone, and yeah. it, I, I hate to say it, if OBJ has a big year, it could be Jarvis. It could be. It. I mean, I yeah, mean, it'd right. be awful to. I mean, that's crazy to say that, and you know, for how important he's been for the chemistry of this team and the rebuild of you know this franchise, but. It's a business. Yeah. I mean, straight up, it's a business. Looking at it, too, I didn't. Jordan Elliott's locked up to Guy um, Phillips. Mm-hmm. If Mac Wilson and Taki Taki actually play well this year. So, I mean, it, it could potentially look a little bit scary, but if you actually break it down, most of the defense is already accounted for. It's just kind of plugging in a couple spots. But your most important, your corners, your safeties, and your edge rushers, they're locked up. The one guy that. Uh, Austin Hooper's making eight point two five million. He's five point three percent of the cap. I think Hooper needs to have a productive year. Yeah, because that could. I mean, with with the way Harrison Bryant showed out as a rookie last year, I mean, he's got potential. I don't know. I mean, and Joku could, but then we'd have to resign him too. So it, it'd just be interesting to see how they. If Njoku blows up this year and Hooper doesn't, is Hooper gone and we resign Njoku? I mean, you have to trade him. He's blocked. He's I don't think they just take a dead hit on the cap just to cut a guy. Uh, yeah, they'd probably trade him for something. They'd have to trade him. And I, people are in Joku. People are saying he's looking good. Well, we were there. <laughs> what did we see? I mean, we can talk about that here in a second. Yeah. But well, here we'll get into training training camp now. So, 
you know, obviously we got a week of training camp under the belt. We were up there for, uh, it was what, Thursday? Friday. 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 So we were up there Friday. First day for fans. Yeah. Uh, Zach didn't get to go because he had to work. It was unfortunate. Yep. But, you know, the, us three were there. So, you know, we'll just kind of break it down, kind of what we saw and then also what we've been reading. Um, I think the first thing I have on here is receivers. It kind of sucked for the day we were up there. We didn't see, and during the team stuff and the seven on seven stuff, we didn't see any Jarvis, any Odell, um, any Higgins. Did we see any? Jarvis was working. I was. I saw Jarvis working on the other side. They did a couple like individual where you know they just run a route. They weren't part of the team scrimmage. The seven on seven portion. They they practiced. They practiced during the individual stuff, but they didn't come over. So you know, leading up to Friday, we heard about how crisp the offense had looked, and then Friday didn't really look that great. Mm -hmm. But part of that, we're we're kind of putting on the fact that. I mean, Jarvis is thrown to a lot of guys who might not even be on the team. We saw DPJ was out there a decent amount. He looked good. He did. Um, Schwartz was out there. He made a couple of nice plays. Um, one guy we got to talk about is that Hollins guy. Yeah. Number 83. Yeah. He, um, he, he made a bunch of plays. We kept having to say, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. We kept having to look him up. Yeah. And then, but then I got home and read and they've been talking about him all camp that kind of like the extra. So you got, you know, Jarvis, Odell, Higgins, DPJ, and then, like, that extra receiver, like that fifth guy, they're saying the best one easily has been that Hollins kid so far. Hollins, uh, Hodge was out there, Kadero Hodge, and we just signed a guy from Minnesota's practice squad Davian, yesterday, yep. Davian Davis. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, okay. But, you know, I did tweet out then on, it was either Friday or Saturday morning, that, hey, you know, I've, I'm seeing some reports that Baker didn't look as crisp, you know, in the team drills on Friday. I was like, just side note, no starting receivers were on the field. So, got to take it with a grain of salt. I mean, he was, no over, he was overthrowing. Yeah, no chub. Yeah, no chub. He was overthrowing guys, you know, a little bit. And there was just no timing. But but as far as Baker dropping back and letting the ball go, dude looked good. Now, I'll say this. Yesterday, so we record on Sunday, Saturday. All those guys were back in. No, no Beckham, but Jarvis was in there. Yeah. Some of the studs were in there. Baker not looking very sharp again. here. And you guys can say, you know, hey, it's 7 on 7s, 11 on 11s. I'm not really saying that the offense doesn't look good, but I'm saying, hey, maybe we're not giving the defense enough credit. No, the yeah. defense looked great. The defense is going to be nice. So we we, we kind of want to go position by position, but just immediate reactions, by the way. Our defense is it's big big and fast, yes. and they look extremely athletic yeah. everywhere except for Andrew Billings. <laughs> and, and Well, he just looks big. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not a good Grand one. Delpit looks like... I mean, he just walk up and steal your wife, and you just be like, "You're welcome." Yeah, I'll be single. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he is a man amongst boys out there. He's huge. Newsom is way bigger than I thought he was. Newsom yeah. was his size and presence on the field impressed me. He was, like you said, a lot bigger than I thought he was. Yeah. I mean, he's taller and he's more built. I thought he might have been a little thinner, kind of like uh, Denzel is. No, the, oh. the dude is pretty built yeah and so. you know greedy actually greedy look quick during like the drills didn't look bad no mm -mm. and like justin told us he, you know he's not a scrub he just hasn't been able to stay on the field so if he can stay i mean it's almost an embarrassment of riches yep. what'd you how'd you think they looked yeah <laughs> well i, I uh just the kind of justin's point about how baker's looked we kind of said we were saying reports last year remember the people were like yeah. case keenum's out there just slinging it yep. you know looking great and we everybody was like well, well it's been, baker looks like garbage can't you know he's over mm -hmm. so you know we've kind of heard some of the same stuff keenum's also um, last against year. the twos on the defense right and so baker didn't look great friday but i still think he, he bounced back with two or three touchdowns Oh, yeah. So, I mean, yep. it just wasn't as – we heard those first two days that it was basically just like he was going on air. It was yeah. just like completion. Nothing was hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. And that just wasn't the case on Friday. Um, but uh, uh, running backs, so we'll move into the running backs. I think one more thing with the receivers, when Higgins didn't play at all Friday with the other two starters, to me that kind of makes me think that he's like kind of right now locked in for that third mm -hmm. spot. Yeah, or they just had a really, like, an appointment they had to get to right after practice because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, fun fact, we're, we're leaving training camp, and we're getting ready to uh, cross the, like, the parking lot, the gated parking lot, and this is 
four minutes after the players walked off the field and OBJ and Higgins roll up in uh, OBJ's Lambo. Peace out. Like from me to Josh away, it was pretty mm-hmm. sweet. But how did he get there so fast? <laughs> coach I mean, coach knee, did not have a message after. Yeah, uh, yeah. The knee must be okay because Odell got to his car real quick. Yeah. Um, and yeah. by the way, his car doesn't suck. No, not at all. It's but w- to, to your point before that, though, I mean, Higgins was that third receiver who wasn't practicing with the team drills, yeah. just like Jarvis and OBJ. So yeah, no Chubb. No Jarvis, no BJ, no Higgins. To me, it was kind of like, uh, let's get the second team some work today. Yep. So maybe Higgins, maybe that's kind of a little insight. Maybe Higgins has kind of got the leg up on that third spot. DPJ's look good in camp, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he's look, he, he looked good in the two days before we got there, and then in the day we were there, he made some nice catches. Well, if they're running out the second team, you know, kind of around Baker on offense, DPJ's the guy I want leading that unit. Like, you know, take that step up. Grow in your leadership, you know, you know, work on that timing with Baker out on the field. It's going to, I mean, it, it's positive. That's a good way to build chemistry. Look what Higgins. Yeah. That's how him that's and it. Baker got so in tune. Yeah. It was second string mm-hmm. when, um, Tyrod was here. Yeah. So yep. we'll kind of move into the running backs. Obviously like we talked about Chubb didn't practice the day we were there. Um, cream hunt looked good. A guy I was impressed with was Demetric Felton. Mm-hmm. He looked fast, explosive, shifty. Darius Johnson, we might have to get a – Zach might have to make a sound clip for Felton because uh, <laughs> Dearness Johnson, he missed a couple of days of camp, and, you know, I feel bad because it was for the birth of his kid. So, obviously, you know, it's okay he's there. But, man, it's it's tough missing camp days when you got a six-round draft pick breathing down your neck and he looks good. Right. And he's playing well. That'll be – I think that'll be something that goes into the preseason probably because those two guys will get a lot of run – in the preseason to where that's probably how that situation is going to fall out. You're going to see, you know, in actual life, whatnot, (laughs) there it is. Uh, in the, uh, you're going to be able to see who's going to probably stick around and who's not. And maybe special teams too. I think that might be a big part of it. Yeah. I mean, we know Dearness can return kicks, but I'm sure Felton can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, we did see DPJ and Schwartz back returning punts. So I didn't see, I don't know, I didn't notice any running backs back there returning punts. I thought Felton was at one point, wasn't he? Maybe. I was eating nachos. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Some, something yeah. for everybody if it's you've never life. been to training camp. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on the whole time. I mean, yeah, it's, you've got these guys are, they, they know where they need to be, what they need to do, what drills they're doing, and they get there fast. Like all of a sudden, you know, it'll be individual drills, and you're like, hey, which group is where? And then all of a sudden, the entire defense is over here, and you're like, oh, everybody's here now. And then they'll be doing their stuff, and then it's like, oh, the linebacker stayed, but the D line went this way. It's just first it's, time I've ever been to training camp, and I was blown away almost at the efficiency, just how fast they get things done. They didn't practice that long. They got on the field around 2.30. They were off by 4 o'clock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, high school football practice is longer than that. They don't get near as much done. <laughs> you know, the, these guys, it, it was like, it was crazy how much. It's almost hard to follow along because of how much is going on. Mm-hmm. But, yep. so I think Dearness Johnson, he's got, he's got some work to do if he wants to hold that spot, which would suck because, I mean, we were all, we were all fans of his. But, I mean – Competition is good for your team. Yep, he was our dog pound dog last year in the award show. So we'll kind of move into the DBs then. Obviously, we already touched on it a little bit. Delpit looks huge. Um, Newsom looks big. Denzel was out there. Nobody could complete a pass against our defense on Friday. Ronnie Harrison looked really, really good. Went out. Yeah, we he, didn't even notice it. Yeah, he got hurt, hamstring issue, yep. sat out. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he sat out Saturday. He did sit out Saturday okay. too, yeah. Yep. So hopefully it's not something, anything serious. It's just like, hey, let's not mess around and make this worse of a situation. You know who else they keep talking about? Not a Cincinnati wide receiver, but A.J. Green. A.J. Green. Yeah. His, oh, name, his name just keeps getting tossed around. They said he locked down Jarvis Saturday. Like Jarvis just couldn't get any wiggle room on him. Said that, I think I read somewhere it said that he made a nice play, like a t- tipped a he, pass. Yeah. To, to Lee yeah, the day tipped, we were there. Yeah, tipped okay. the ball on a pick six on Baker. Yeah, so, I mean, he was a guy that, you know, we kind of talked about last year. I mean, they gave him that big contract as being an unsigned or undrafted Mm -hmm. um, player, and then we never really saw him get on the field, and we needed, you know, a cornerback to be on the field. So it was kind of weird that we didn't see him 
last year when but you know names come up yep another interesting thing we saw greedy out there with the ones a lot yes um so i think you know newsom has been out there too so maybe they've been going back and forth but greedy looked good he looked healthy i mean obviously we're not they weren't hitting i'm very interested to see what he's like when it comes time to tackle if he start if he's favoring that shoulder or anything Mm -hmm. you know it's it's probably more mental than physical now if the doctors have cleared him, but that's a big mental hurdle to get over, you know, thinking about tackling somebody with a shoulder that probably felt like he was dead for a year. Yeah, and I don't know how much clarity we'll really get until that first preseason game when they're going against, you know, an actual enemy, an actual opponent, um, where we're tackling will matter. But, yeah, Greedy was out there with the ones. Yeah. Um, Delpit got a lot of run. Harrison was out there. Um, obviously, Denzel was out there. But – um, another surprising thing, if we moved to the linebacker position, Mac Wilson was out there with the ones a lot. Yep. And he's having was. a good camp. Yeah. They're talking about he's been playing well. Obviously, we haven't gotten to any tackling yet, <laughs> which is his biggest weakness. Right. So, again, kind of <laughs> like the greedy thing, we'll see what it's like whenever it goes live. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be interested to go up to a camp on, on a day when they're hitting. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we didn't get to pick the day we got to go. We're no, just we lucky. did. Yeah, we oh, did. Oh, we did? Yeah, I want. Yeah, okay. I well, I, it had to be a weekend for me. You know, yeah. I work. And nights. you're leaving for vacation. Oh, yeah, and I'm going. <laughs> I had, I put in for three days: Friday, Saturday, or Monday, and then it's like a raffle. Mm. That you basically they say, "Hey, they just send you an email and they go, hey, you won these.'" And I say, "Well, thank you." Nice, right? <laughs> it, it was cool I to accept. be there on the first day of fans. Of fans, crowds were the crowd was rowdy. Crowd oh. was having a good time. Yes. Uh, Mac Wilson, you know, he's a guy that might. Um, He's been in the league now for a couple of years. He's got Walker, and they're now in the linebacker room. And you got like JOK, you got Phillips, that are all guys that are wanting to take you know his position, his time away from him. Maybe that's a good thing. You know the comp- You know we talked about having it being competitive. Maybe that's going to bring Mac Wilson back to what mm-hmm. we thought he was going to be. You know because you could have said after his rookie year he was our best linebacker. Yep. You know, and now we're talking about that he might not make the team. I mean, he he's one of those guys that was one of those first, second round talent guys that we got right way late because of supposedly attitude problems or something. We haven't seen any of that. Mm-hmm. Mac Wilson has been he's one of my favorite Browns players, and we've been talking about this with some of the people on on um, on YouTube and and Twitter and Patreon and stuff. Is you know they say we're being hard on Mac. Yeah, because I need to see more of him on the field. I love Mac, the, the guy. If, the way he's bought into Cleveland, he loves being in Cleveland. It's awesome. But it, that only that only takes you so far. I still need you to be able to tackle the guy with the yeah, ball. Those missed tackles killed us last year. Yes. I mean, there were, there were missed tackles in the backfield behind the line of scrimmage where, you know, it had been a big loss, big play for the defense, and the guys end up getting like a first down or more. It's, it's very frustrating – as a fan to be watching that happen, let alone to be, you know, other players on the team, the offense, the coaches. I mean, it's tough. I mean, in his defense, there was like 10 other guys out there doing that too. So <laughs> it wasn't like, it was a team effort. Well, that's on, fine, but uh, I mean, looking you, terrible. If you want to make this team though, you can't be one of those. Oh, absolutely. 10. No, I mean, we're, trust me, the defense is all. No, yeah. I, trust me. I'm not saying he's Leo. the only one who sucked last year, but yeah. 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 It yeah. does yeah. kind of suck for the long. Yeah. We didn't get to see any JOK cause he's out on the COVID list right now. Yep. Um, so that kind of sucks, but, um, you know, the defense, the defense looked good Friday, and it looked good again yesterday. And I think it's, I think this defense has a chance to be like otherworldly. Yeah, I don't think there was really any doubt. I mean, see if you guys agree that um, Anthony Walker is like the leader of that linebacking core right now. I mean, mm-hmm. yep. the dude, just seeing him the way he was on the sideline with the guys, and then going out on the field, and you know, he's just got a he's got a presence about him. It's like okay, we've we've got a pretty good linebacker here. Yeah. Now, is he one of those guys that's wearing the different number now with the number change? Yeah, right? number four. four, four okay. Yeah. I thought so. I thought I saw, you know, some pictures mm-hmm. from training camp, and I saw that, and I was like, man, it, it does look weird. Yeah. yeah. Especially like number four in a Cleveland Browns uniform. Yes. <laughs> Being this big guy on the defensive side. I uh, I kind of like it, though. It's kind of cool. But so we'll move into the D-line here. Just some things. to Miles Garrett is obviously Miles Garrett. He's humongous. He's explosive. We were hit the defensive line individual was right in front of us, so that's like one I got to watch the most. The dude is nuts. I mean, he's just Miles Garrett spent more time interacting with and hyping up the crowd, I think, than he actually did doing drills. Like, <laughs> playing, he was there to yeah. hang out with the crowd, which I'm not complaining about. I mean, the uh, dude's proven it already. He's ready. Yeah, he'll he, be fine. 
but he he's a beast. Jadavion Clowney looks big and fast and athletic and strong. Yes, he's humongous. He is. Um, I, I don't want to say skinnier than I thought because it makes sound like he's real thin, but he's leaner than I thought. Yeah. You he's, know what I mean? And he's grandma might call him a tall glass of water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he came walking sure. out and we were like, whoa. He's big. Now, yeah, I will he's, say he's really big. Another guy that fits right into that category with the way Clowney looked on the field was Tack McKinley. He's mm-hmm. put together. He's big, man. Yep. He's just he's not super tall, but he's big. Yeah. Um, he, lo- he looked good. He played well also. Uh, All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second time I've done that joke and nobody's acknowledged oh, I'm sorry. It. What was your joke? I didn't even hear it. Yeah. I said he looked good and he played well. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. okay. Yeah. Well done. Maybe uh, we just ignored it on purpose. Uh, uh, <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Twice. Um, a guy who we thought was laboring a little bit. Our boy, Andrew Billings. Oh, I thought we were talking about you. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to get to the bleachers. I was. <laughs> and, and and my, I shouldn't have worn flip flops, but... Um, <laughs> No, Andrew Billings supposedly is 20 pounds lighter now than he was at minicamp. Dude, I would have loved to have seen what he looked like at minicamp then. Yeah, because he he's a bowling ball, and they, they're, they're talking about how strong he is, but that doesn't do anything if you can't move. <laughs> and he, compared to the rest of our D-line, Malik McDowell looks huge. Malik McDowell is he's a super impressive. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then there's Billings, and he'd do his one drill against the pad, and then... <sighs> Be like holding his back, and I was like, "Man, this guy's not going to make it." He was hands hand. on the hip most of the, the day. Practice. I think. Yeah, yeah. he was. He Is he was, like okay? So obviously, I wasn't there. Is he Vince Wilfork big? He's big. Short. Or, he's short. He's, yeah, he's short. Right. He's he's about Vince, Vince Wilfork. Vince Wilfork was Wilfork a big, big boy. Yeah, but shorter. You know what okay. I mean? Like they gotcha. took all that weight, but they're really cramming it in there. Right. Like yeah. He's yeah. Short Phil, t- like short Phil Taylor. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and he was he looked. I mean. He looked like he was enjoying himself, but <laughs> he is. He looked like he was laboring. He's and probably going to hate when pad day comes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was where we were, you know, sitting in the stands aren't real tall or anything because it's just, you know, it's a low key practice. You're really right there on the field. But the angle was difficult to really see what was going on in the trenches, like, you know, interior. So I don't know. Maybe he's doing okay. Maybe they like, because he was running with the ones. He's running with the first, first team. But man. There's just when you see all these guys run off the field. I mean, they come run off. They're jacked. They're you know they're these big, lean, muscular guys. And then Billings is just kind of waddling off. And <laughs> the, the rest of our D line looks like the modern day D line. Like they're still huge, but they're they're cut. They're athletic. They can move. He looks like that early two thousands, late nineties, <laughs> just big, round, hole plugging D tackle, yeah. and um. We'll see how that works out. I don't know. Maybe they, they you know, stick him right next to Malik Jackson. Maybe I, it works. Malik Jackson is a he's gonna big start. dude. He's going to start. He's tall. I mean, if, I think Very if I had big. to pick two in that position, just on them doing drills, I would say McDowell and Jackson. But, I mean, they're saying Billings. They brought Billings in to be a starter. Yeah. Well, and we haven't talked about Jordan Elliott yet. No. He, he looked okay. He was... They definitely, that we talked about, it looks like he lost more than 10 pounds. Jordan Elliott looks like he could be coming off the edge or even playing like some sort of linebacking or role. tight end. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, seriously. <laughs> seriously. Yeah. He, he does not look like an interior def- defensive lineman right now. No. He's he's lean. He, look, he looked more put, built like Clowney and Tack McKinley than he did like Jackson or McDowell or Billings. Yeah, he, so you tell like, me, so Billings is like Big Tony from the Longest Yard. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. I said, I said he looked like you ever seen the replacements? Yes, the two bodyguards, the ones that. Oh yes, that yes. he looks like the one, like the shorter one, <laughs> the shorter one, bald. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, he, I said he was looking. It's a for great Sh- movie, by the it way. It is. Yeah, very good movie. He's out there looking for Shane Falco. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah, but uh, one position I forgot to put on here, but we'll touch on was tight end. Hooper, Hooper had a couple catches. Harrison Bryant was out. Harrison Bryant's fast. Mm-hmm. Yes. He's fast. We just yes. get, hopefully he can catch the ball more consistently and not fumble it. But yeah. he looked explosive on that second team. Um, Hooper made a couple. We didn't see a ton of Njoku in the team drills, which if we're going by our same logic, does that mean he's Well, and then surpassed? there were also times that, you know, we, I think he was in there to block quite a bit too. Like you said, it was hard. It's hard. It's really to hard keep to keep track see. of everybody. I could imagine. 
Well, and they, <laughs> they run plays, you know, so quick, so quick, and they're rotating guys in and out, and it's like, okay, who's in the field this time? And then we're like, who's 83? Look it up real quick. And then by the time, you know, two plays have gone, it's – it, like, it moves fast. And like he says, you know, we're not up super high. Yeah. So being able to tell what's going on on the line, especially the opposite side of you, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on because you don't have a good bird's eye view of it. But he, I didn't see him out there running a ton of routes. No. Stuff and like that. Who was the tight end? <clears throat> and I, he's obviously four string or whatever, but the guy that was super open, remember he got like behind oh, the yeah. defense, he was wide open. And I think it was Kyle Luoletta. Was it the third string quarterback Almost throwing the didn't ball? Throw it to him. We didn't know who you know who our third string was when camp started. I thought it was Zach. He didn't come up with us. I thought it was because <laughs> right. he's practicing. Hey, he's out there. <laughs> but I mean, and he finally threw him the ball, and, and it was just one of those weird moments. Like, okay, these guys are obviously the backup backup. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, like he he kind of hesitated on the ball, and then it was kind of overthrown, so he like dived for it, and it was like watching a Canton charge. And, and I'm pretty sure he dropped it. I think the ball hit the ground and bounced back up into his lap. Yeah, and it, it was, was like, dude, there's nobody around you. Connor Davis. Okay, it was, it was, it was, was, it was honestly we hysterical. Have, we have six tight ends on the on the roster currently. It was like watching a Canton Charge game. You ever go to a Charge game and oh, they yeah. like make a nice move and they get to the paint and then they just brick it off the <laughs> backboard and then they get 15 rebounds in a row and nobody scores and goes to the other end. That's kind of what it well, was like. And it's also <laughs> just like what you're going to see in the Hall of Fame game Thursday night. Oh, I mean, yeah. seriously, I went to, I guess it would have been two years ago before COVID. I went and watched the Falcons and the Bears, was it? You watched uh, second stringers play for one series and Dude, then it, a bunch of Yeah, scrubs. second stringers maybe for a second. No, it was yeah. the Broncos because Philip Lindsay was there. Okay. But I mean, there's guys out there and I remember I went with a buddy and he's not a huge football fan. He's kind of like, so like, you know, who, who are some of these guys? I'm like, don't even worry about it. Yeah, no. <laughs> they, they honestly, they're going to bring a lot of these extra guys into onto the team just to kind of play here. And they're kind of auditioning to hopefully make a practice squad on somebody else's yeah. team. They'll be selling you a car next month. Yeah. yeah. It's all about environment for anybody that hasn't come up for a Hall of Fame weekend. Yeah. Uh, you just come up Friday and just enjoy yourself. I don't even know if they, when are they doing the enshrinement? Cause I've never done that. I just, I'm like, I Hey, think they flipped them now. I'm not gonna oh, lie. Really? I kind of want to go to it just cause I'd like to see Peyton, Peyton Manning. Yeah. Uh, I just, I pulled up the schedule. Let me see if it says. Yeah. For anybody not in the, the Canton area and you get a chance, they've revamped that hall of fame it's area. So legit. You don't it's, even know. Do you guys even know what's coming? Indoor water park is, is in the next phase. Yep. Yep. Indoor, top water, golf. indoor water park, uh, Putting top golf big, in? uh, big, yeah. uh, ho- uh five, like five star hotel with mm-hmm. two restaurants in it. I mean, place is going to be Con- like a that little, huge it's conference Hall of Fame center. village is what it's going to yeah. be. Yep. I mean, they it's, said it's Disney Disney World for football. Yes. It's crazy, too. I mean, we live, I mean, Justin I, lived 10 I minutes literally, from there. I, I went to Glen Oak, which is like a local school, and they played half their games there. I mean, we played Canton McKinley. Anybody that's from like the Northwest Ohio, like Northeast Ohio, Canton McKinley, Masson, like their big programs, they play all their high school football yeah. playoff games there. I mean, me and Josh played, Josh have played in there yeah. back when it was Fawcett. It was, it, it wasn't, wasn't like it is like now. It, is now. No. Oh, yeah. it, is, it was a million times and nicer Fawcett now. Was still nice. And it was, Fawcett was a nice stadium. Yeah. yeah. But what they're, yeah. If you're not from the area, come check it out sometime because it is, it's going to be just driving by the stadium at night to kind of like light it up with a light blue. Now mm-hmm. it looks nuts. It looks awesome. Yeah. And if you've just never been to the hall of fame period, go i mean it's cool the exhibits are awesome i mean and if you if you were there five years ago ten years ago trust me it's totally it's different. different they yeah. change the exhibits every year they're always adding stuff moving stuff i mean it's just it is awesome, awesome so it, it's looking like the enshrinement is <clears throat> saturday the 7th for the class of 2020 because obviously mm, they got to do two yeah covid um so that's going to be on saturday then sunday is going to be for 2021 so is there concert on is friday when there's a concert as well. When was that? Yeah. Because the oh, game's Thursday Leonard, Leonard, night, Leonard Skinner okay. and Brad, uh, was it Brad Paisley? Yeah. Skinner. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, the game's on Thursday. Okay. Uh, starting at 8 o'clock, uh, which Najee Harris kind of came out. I just saw this the other day. He came out and said that he wants heavy reps at this game. So, I mean, yeah. It, it's the only thing I would want to kind of, my wife wanted to go and tickets are stupid. And yeah. I was like, no. Same thing. It's not a good time. It was like a hundred and, Eighty dollars for a ticket all the way at the top of the stadium to watch wow. guys who yeah. are not going to be on the. Team. And she was like, and I was, she was like, I thought about it, and I was like, well, I'm glad you didn't because <laughs> you don't want to even go. You're a Steelers fan, you don't even want to go to watch that. No, no. I mean, is is any starter going to suit up? I would say probably not. I did see some more pictures of Big Ben surface though over the last couple of days from training camp. Shit. Definitely way leaner than he yeah. has been in the past. Leaner, that's great. How's that elbow? <laughs> yeah. We'll see. 
We're not going to find out on Thursday. I can tell you that. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully, they don't paint the field with the wrong paint. Oh, my God. (laughs) That was so bad. Gosh, I forgot about that. (laughs) That was so bad. Somebody got fired. And that was the first year they had the new stadium, like, ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, They rushed. Canceled Mm -hmm. They rushed so much, somebody forgot to check the paint. That was Brett Favre's induction year. Yeah. The Green Bay game, yeah. And there was no Uh game. It's crazy. But... Any other training camp thoughts you guys want to touch on? I only have one thing. Do you want to go, no, go ahead? Go ahead. So no, you, go, thing, no, you no, were there. You go ahead. No, no, <laughs> you go ahead. You were there. <laughs> Thank you. So the only thing that I will touch on is um, they obviously weren't hitting, but um, the the line, the defensive line was getting to the quarterback big time. Yeah. And they gave him a few like, oh, hey, we'll just take it easy. If it was an actual game and they were going after Patrick Mahomes or – Whoever's going to start for Texans, uh, you know, week two, <laughs> I think that we're getting home a lot. Oh, uh, I, I actually made the comment and I said, poor Jedrick Wells. He's got to go up against, or Wills, he's got to go up against Miles Garrett every day in practice. Yeah, but look at what it did for him last year. Yeah. I mean, you're going to give that every, um, just about every game, it's going to be easier in practice. Yes. Because there's no other Miles Garrett's out there. Yeah. One, one, Quick thought is just to go back and retouch on Tack McKinley. If Tack McKinley can stay healthy and be in that rotation with Garrett and Clowney, I mean, we we got us a steal. Yeah. He, I know, and again, no pads, I get it. But just going through drills and watching him, you know, in the team uh, set or portion, he he is fast. He's fast. He's big. He's strong. I mean, could be a good good pickup for us. So uh, since I wasn't there, did you guys see any of the field goal kicking? At all? Um, Is there any of that? They, they didn't kick. They didn't kick the day no, they, we were they there. They did a lot of punt. They were doing a lot okay. of punting. And so, uh, obviously, Thursday in uh, camp was terrible for Cody Parkey. He went Correct. one of five in the kicking session. And uh, McLaughlin. I think it, it, McLaughlin. Yeah, it's his first. What's his first name? Chase. Chase, yeah. Chase McLaughlin went five of five. So, you know, everybody kind of freaking out. Parky did go five of five yesterday. Uh, yesterday, yep, so we at least have that. It's just. But like, if you look at, I think I, I think Justin, you were the one that sent it to us, and I, and I was looking at the numbers. They're like, oh, sigh of relief. Okay, you can exhale. Cody Parky made all of his field goals. Thirty from thirty two, yeah. thirty, thirty five, thirty seven, forty one, and forty three. But we know he's good from there. Can we push him back a little bit? <laughs> yeah, get, yeah, can we go back ten yards? Yeah, can, can we kick s- a forty five yard field goal? Well, they had like Jesus. a little, uh, like a field goal thing set up. <laughs> for kids that they could come up and kick out and i was with my brother-in-law and i looked at him and i was like they're auditioning for parky's yeah. job they out were here. doing tryouts yeah. out in the yeah. fan area these little <laughs> get anybody up here all that kid's eight I years old they probably okay. told the the people attending that booth like hey if somebody comes out here really boots one yes <laughs> no right yeah, tell them that they in. just won a prize they get to talk to andrew barry yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh geez yeah. It's yeah. like that baseball team. I forget who it was a couple of years ago. They have the baseball stadiums. They have like the guess year, how fast you can throw yeah. it. And the one kid yeah. threw upper nineties and the, the team signed, signed him. They signed him like a triple A deal. No yeah. Yep. yeah. So, you know, who knows next time I go to training camp, I'm taking my kicking shoe. It's better than <laughs> flip flops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be able to make it to the stadium quicker, but all right. So that's, that's kind of our thoughts on training camp, how it's been going so far. I'm excited to bring you guys another episode next week. Uh, after a week of hitting, knock on wood, no injuries this week. Once we start, once we bust the pads out, um, we'll have we'll have a game to talk about. Mm-hmm. What the Hall of Fame game? So we'll have yep. an actual football game to talk about. Yep. Um, so it's it's fun. So thanks for checking out another episode of the Dogs. Uh, the season's just around the corner. We're pumped to actually have real football to talk about. Thank you to everybody who stuck with us each week through the off season. We know it gets slow and it gets boring at times, but. We slugged our way through it. We found stuff to talk about, and we appreciate you guys not only tuning in, but we grew in this offseason, so we really appreciate that. Remember to head to jointhedogs.com to join the Patreon and play some fantasy football with us, plus check out our extra episodes. Uh, To everyone who's already a member, we'll see you over on the Dogs After Hours where we're talking about some of the Madden ratings and how the Browns players did in those ratings. Uh, To everyone else, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys all next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast and become an official Dog Pack member at jointhedogs.com.
Cream Hunt being 12th, man, I'm taking Cream Hunt over Saquon and Josh Jacobs and Joe Mixon. And honestly, unless I see something different, I'm taking him over Zeke. It wasn't Chris Carson ahead of him too? Yeah. Yeah. Man, uh, I mean. Maybe we're biased because we're Browns fans, but do people not realize that Cream Hunt led the league in rushing and right. was about to take the league by storm. And yeah, we're not that, that far away. Didn't, that and, video didn't serve us. <laughs> yeah. And I this mean, isn't, this isn't fantasy football where it's like, okay, if you, if you're going after a starting right, running back, maybe right. you want Chris Carson instead of yeah. cream hunt, I guess, you know, you can make that argument, but we're talking about Madden ratings. Yeah. This is actual cream football. hunt is, I mean, Chris Carson's no slouch. I mean, he's a very talented running back to be a six round pick and do what he's done. But, Cream Hunt. <laughs> I mean, we just saw him in person. That dude is a different breed. 